Welcome to Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Patton. On behalf of my director, Brian Blackton, we're here to uh, bring you up to date what's going on here in the, in the city. And um, of course, St. Patrick's Day probably will be history by now as we're getting ready for Easter. But uh, with me today, and I'll call him Mr. Maple Syrup, is Dean Wilbur from East Concord over there on Oak Hill Road. And I say across from Turtle Town Pond. That's where I used to go as a kid so much fishing. But um, your your um, name of your farm is a Windsor? No, Maple Tree Farm. That's it, Maple Tree Farm over there. And uh, how is it sap this year? I mean, it seems like we never really had a winter. Could, when did you start tapping trees? Well, I started, uh, let's see, uh, next to the last weekend in February. Really? And uh, we, we tapped uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, and then... Uh, um, the following weekend, and then the sap started to flow pretty well. Um, season uh, started a little bit earlier than we anticipated, yeah. but um, it's uh, it's really pushed us. We've uh, uh, had a good year so far, and if it continues, it'll be a record year. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't frozen for a couple of nights. So I was going to say because mm -hmm. January is such a different yeah. month. February wasn't that cold either at times, but I wondered if that would start the sap going early or not. But well, you never know. I um, know. You know, it's all dependent upon Mother Nature and what oh, yes. she gives us. I, you know, we have to have freezing nights. If we don't have freezing nights, it'll be a short season. Really, that's what it is in the freezing nights. So. Freezing nights, warm days. It's supposed to be getting back to cooler nights this week, I guess. From what they were saying on the TV last night. But I noticed you brought something out. This now, this one here must be the old tap. Well, oh. actually, one of the older ones is is uh, this one. Um, that probably is at least a hundred years old. Oh my God! Um, this one could be as much as fifty. Really? Um, then, probably fifteen years ago, they came out with this one, which is what is known as the health spout. And uh, four years ago, I actually switched over to this one which is, I call a mini spout, and the difference is this is 5 sixteenths where this is less than a quarter of an inch. The beauty of this particular spout is that it, the hole in the tree or the wound in the tree is much less, so that means that we're injuring the tree considerably less mm -hmm. than we would be with this hole or even with yeah, this hole. Yeah. So the amount of wood that we are wasting in each tree when we tap is very minimal. Oh, so yeah. you put a hammer, you, and how do you get we, that in the tree? We, we have a special tool, oh, okay. and we tap, tap it just a little bit, and then hook a line to it. Oh, oh so you so then you put this? And this line goes through it. So, oh, that's um, how it is. I brought a piece of this line because I know. Uh, you can see it's it's uh, pretty well chewed. In fact, almost chewed completely. Apart. That because the squirrels or the rat, uh, mouse, mice, or the bears or the deer chew it? This is deer. Deer, okay. really? Um, and, and you can see they just put it in their mouth and they chew it. Um, whereas a squirrel actually will take a chunk right out of it. Really? But uh, yeah, we found this in the woods. And uh, uh, this means that that particular line, which had, I think, 27 taps on it, uh, it would have been running on the ground if we hadn't walked the line. Yeah. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize the amount of work that goes into it. They think oh, I because know. Because we have tubing. We don't have to collect buckets. I know, yeah. We still have to go out after there's a storm uh, for storm damage, and we also have to check and make sure that, you know, the animals haven't done this to it, because if that uh, has that many holes in us, we're not going to get this out. Mm, how, many, uh, how many lines you got out there tapping this year? Um, I've never counted the lines. What I do at the end of the season, because I have yeah. a number of people uh, helping me when I tap, mm is we collect all of these and, yep. and uh, remove everyone from the tree and I actually throw them away. I start with a clean spout every year. Wow. Um, so I count the number when I get all done. Ah. And uh, that way if we add mid-season or change something around, yeah. um, I don't keep track of it until the end of the season. Wow. So um, we've made some nice syrup this year. Um, this is... Uh, uh, now they renamed it, right? It's all different, different. Now, now it used to be, was it? Um, it used to be um, 
light amber, yes. uh, medium amber, um, dark amber, and green bee. Yeah. And now it's golden delicate, which is the lighter, amber rich, uh, which is the best all around syrup, um, dark robust, and then there's an extra dark strong, which I don't even bother with. It's, no, yeah, it's, it's not good. But um, uh, I was packaging today. Uh, in fact, I packaged pints and half pints, and I put up uh, 200 of these little jugs this morning. My goodness uh, gracious. It's labor intensive. Yeah. It takes a lot of time. Now, when's the big maple day coming up? That's um, the end of March or toward the... We do maple weekend. Yeah. And that's the 21st and 22nd. So that's coming up next week then. That's coming right up. Um, yeah. So uh, we're looking forward to that. We have a lot of people there, and we stress on education. Yep. Uh, we want people to understand just what it's like to be out there in the woods. And, oh, I can't and, imagine. Uh, you know, I've been out there since uh, January actually putting lines out. Oh, and my And then goodness. we didn't tap until February. And it will take us till the 1st of May to clean the lines. And if, and if you can remember, and I know you can, but the ratio of sap versus syrup, boil time. Is how much it takes, how much sap? Well, I used to say it, it took a barrel. Well, barrels are 32 to 40 gallons, but it actually mm. takes 45 to 50 gallons to make one. Make one what? One gallon of syrup. That's it? Holy we have to We have to boil it away. And wow. So far this season, we've collected somewhere around 6,000 gallons of sap. Whew. And we will end up with 14,000, 15,000 gallons of sap. Season. My God! So it's uh, you know when you when you see the steam going up through the the roof, uh, yeah. that's all that water that we're boiling off. Really? My uh, goodness! Typically, um, the the syrup in this jug is sixty seven percent sugar. Um, the sap that comes out of the tree is uh, two percent sugar on the average. Really? So you're taking and, and you're boiling away mm. that much water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so syrup is, is uh, actually 66.9 on the brick scale, yep. uh, or 67% as I, I call it. Um, but 1% uh, mineral, 22%. Uh, Let me want you to show up the can. 22% uh, water ah, on syrup. Interesting. When we make other products, such as the candy or the cream and so forth, we just boil away more of the water yep. and concentrate the sugars. Wow, my goodness gracious. Now, how many years have you been doing this? I've been doing it since I was seven years old. So you must, you know, then you can remember the days when you had to go like a horse and wagon or yeah. do the buckets on the trees and... I remember driving the horses for my uncle when I was seven years old. My gosh. And uh, so I was born in 1940. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow, this is a big year. I mean, this is a big year coming up for you then. Big year. 80. And I've been at Maple Tree Farm in East Concord for 45 years. Wow. So. And you weren't stupid, excuse me, stupid enough to go on the ice that turtle down and have, you, have your truck go through the snow, uh, ice like somebody did this year. No, that's, uh, they do it every year. Isn't that crazy? So. But no, I, uh, I just, I can remember my grandmother used to tap trees up there in Salisbury and I guess in East Andover when they had farms up there. But she used to do the... My step grandfather did the same thing with the buckets and the on yep. the trees and stuff, and she would uh, boil the sap and stuff because he never had that much. But I mean, it was it was interesting to see him do it, though. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of fun, you know. Uh, um, if I didn't enjoy doing it, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Well, no, it's just, obviously, it's so much work. Oh, I know. Um, you know, I, I pretty much do this year round now, just simply because it takes me longer to get around and. And, you know, I, I like working in the woods. So. Yeah, you won't be halfway on the woods, but if you're by yourself, well, I hope I, you got your button on or something. because I have a cell phone. phone. Yeah, well, just make sure, because I'll tell you, you never know what's out there. No, um, you ever had a moose out there? Oh, yeah, I've seen moose. Uh, really? I've seen bear. Uh, oh. I enjoy seeing a lot of the smaller wildlife. Uh, I've seen uh, ermine. Uh, an it's uh, like a weasel uh, huh. or a ferret. It's a small animal, long, thin. Um, beaver. Um, uh, today, uh, um, in the road, there was a dead possum. But you know, I see possum out 
I don't know. Frequently. Yeah. A lot of deer. I see deer virtually every day. Really? Every single day. I saw a bobcat yeah. the other day. Oh, yeah. They're cleaning their background. So, the, hmm. uh, you know, that's what makes it fun for me. Uh, and when I'm out there alone, I see a lot more than I do if somebody's with me because the other person is, you know, talking yeah, to you me. You don't even camp over there. They can't be able to drop out a bear or something, for goodness sakes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, so. Well, you know, they're pretty much afraid of us unless we, you know, corner them or they hit young. But yeah, well. <laughs> I have bear on the property. And, uh, really? Uh, last year in the game camera, we had some. Uh, Two little cubs that are like eight in inches long, pretty small. Have they come out of hibernation yet? Haven't seen evidence, but who knows? Somebody said they, were, they were, thought they were coming out because it was, the snow had been melting and everything yes. else. How many acres do you own over there? I have 40 acres uh, on Maple Tree Farm, but I also yeah. tap trees of the neighbors. Oh, really? Uh, up and down the road. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so um, the majority of my taps are. 75% of them are on somebody else's land. Oh, wow. And yeah. so I trade syrup for the use of the trees. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Works out well for everybody. For well, sure. When it's, a, when it's a bad season, I lose. When it's a, <laughs> you know, a really good season, why, yeah. you know, they get paid appropriately. Well, of course. Yeah. It's a, it's a, that's the way neighbors used to be. You know, today, you're very lucky if a neighbor will even speak to you, let alone wave to you. Yeah, but that back years ago, you knew your neighbors, you and they and they, you know, I'm not saying they lived with you, but they would wave hi, you know, visit maybe back and forth, or if someone was sick or had a death in the family, they would be they they had to help and whatever they could do. But now it's like nobody knows anybody. No, it's true. It's, it's sad. You know, I'm on Oak Hill Road a lot, and uh, uh, you know, gathering side of the road and so forth, and I wave to everybody. Oh yeah. And. You know, it used to be everybody would wave back. Yeah, yeah. But it isn't that way anymore. No, and no. It, uh, no, um, it's true. And it's you know, sad. It's one of those things. Uh, I can remember when we used to go fishing on the Turtle Town Pond. And we, my father would always line the boat up to that house up on the left side of the pond up on the hill. Yeah. There was like a big barn a window there. And he always lined the boat up to that area. And that's where the best fishing was. <laughs> but, um, How about that? Uh, can you hold up the metal tap again? Sure. There you go. This one is uh, um, see it probably one of the oldest that I have. And you notice how um, long it is, too. Now, I'm not sure whether that had something to do with the type of bucket that they had on it. But uh, uh, it's interesting because you can see the size of the hole that you would drill, and that was like a half inch hole. Really? So, and then we went to this one, which was 7 16 but uh, uh, this one had a hook for the bucket yes. itself. Yes. And uh, we also have some, uh, the buckets that I'm currently using are what they call hookless, and they just go over the top of the spout. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, we use covers on everything, and all of our buckets are, are relatively new, and they're all lead free. So they don't have the So you still galvanics. do use buckets then in some cases? I have, I think, 11 buckets this year. Yeah. 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 Uh, just to show people. Oh, you know, yeah, what sure. Like, so. And you, of course, had the, had the, uh, uh, His Excellency, the governor up there recently. Yeah, and uh, uh, it was fun because we had school kids from Shaker Road School. Yeah. And the uh, governor was quite into the educational aspect of uh, Maple. Um, I showed him the conventional tap that we're using, and then I uh, handed him one of these smaller spouts as we were walking into my planted maple orchard. Yes. And he looked at it and he says, "Oh, what's that?" And I says, "That's a spout. Same as you know. Yeah. Uh, we put in the the tree with the bucket, except this has tubing, and you notice how much smaller it is. So when we got to actually tapping, he held the two drill bits up." And he asked the children from Shaker Road School, if they were a tree, which one would they like to be drilled by? <laughs> <laughs> and obviously it was the smaller one. Yeah. So he got his point across. And, uh, uh, 
And of course, I'm sure you reminded him that we're you know, members of the Grange with him as well, and he's a Granger. Well, um, we, we did talk about the Grange uh, from a standpoint of what it has done for farming and yeah. the fact that we're losing yes. that kind of an interest. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's too bad because I can remember over the Oak Hill area, there used to be some big cow farms over there. Yeah, there were, there were a number of dairy farms and two or three chicken farms. And and of course, with Sonny Nelson passing away, that he was a yeah. big farm big over there. Farm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you no, know, yeah. but it is sad that <clears throat> they claim farming in another way is is expanding on the on growing the vegetables and all that stuff, but the actual dairy and all that is kind of it has decreased. That's true. Um, you know, um, I'm going to do maple as long as I can. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. Primarily for my own enjoyment and the community. Sure. Um, it's not something that uh, um, I make a lot of money at. I do it because you know. Because you enjoy that's it. What I do. That's what you enjoy. Uh, you know, people wonder why syrup costs what it does, and it is expensive. But if they were out in the woods with us on the days when it's you know wind blowing and oh, ten yeah. degrees oh. and. and uh, you know, walking the miles and miles of tubing to make sure that we don't have oh, I, like that this. gets me. Oh, god, <laughs> um, it's it's a lot of work, and that's why it costs what it does. Look how that's chewed, though. And you said this yeah. is what yeah. and they, deer chew this like they, that. They they chew it, and I think just because they like to feel the tension in their mouth or something. I don't know. Really, but you can see that obviously is well chewed. Yeah, I guess it is. That was on the ground, so you know it had. So you haven't had any deviltry gone. from kids or teen or adults going out there, purposely cutting lines. Not right this out. year. Oh, that's Not good. this year. And last year we got through with just a couple of, of small uh, uh, problems, um, but we've had years uh, where you know somebody would cut two or three hundred feet of our line out <laughs> and just leave it. And, that's stupid. You know, if they wanted it that badly. I know, it I know. It's like, yeah. what in the world? Yeah. It's crazy. You know, somebody who's dedicated to his, his profession or whatever, instead of doing that, so why don't you go and offer to help? You know, but no, no, do double train instead. And that's stupid. So, but that's, hey. But what the old it saying? is what it is, you know, this is 2020. Yeah. yeah. Well, what they say, what goes just, on comes around, so yeah. they'll get paid back on their end. But you know, when I uh, when I grew up in Maple and uh, in the uh, um, late '40s, early '50s, we never had any problems. No, I, I can't remember. You know, people stealing buckets, uh, uh, smashing buckets, or doing all of that. But you know, it's it's different today. And thankfully, I don't have as much vandalism as some people have. Oh, that's good. That was good. Have you ever, now I heard back, of, I think I may have asked you this, but I know a few years ago I heard that they were actually tapping the white, um, white birch white birch trees. Yep, they, they do, and um, birch syrup is uh, much different than maple syrup. The yeah. uh, uh, amount that it takes of the birch sap to make a gallon of syrup is about a hundred to one. Mm. Um, I have tasted it on more than one occasion, and uh, quite honestly, I would never bother to yeah. do that much work. Well, it doesn't um, seem like it would have a taste, uh, something, a bitter taste, maybe, or something. Well, it is, it is, I think it's bitter, but it's used for cooking. Really? And uh, it's, you know, as I say, very, very expensive because of the amount of sap that it takes. You can make uh, birch syrup after the maple season is over, hmm. so that's the good thing. It seems tubing is seeing tubing from the road a temptation for damage or theft. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I have a lot of of uh, tubing that runs parallel to the road. Yeah. Um, so far, nobody's bothered it. Um, Nobody has bothered our tanks this year. Um, I do have to keep my tanks locked, oh, yeah, chained yep. to something because they have been attempts to steal them. Uh, but we deal with it. 
I know I'm talking with Don Ross up at Ross View there a couple of years ago. They had problems the same way. They stopped. In fact, they stopped tubing down uh, tapping trees because of the vandalism up there. Yeah. But I don't know. I think they've gone back, but I don't know. But yeah, it's it's like why? You know, what what purpose does anybody get other than you know to maybe stand there laughing, ha ha, and all that? But yet. The work that you put into it, it's not right. It's its stupid. Well, but, you know, it takes more to entertain our youth today than it did when we were growing up. We could find things to entertain ourselves. <laughs> well, we, we always did, we yes. We go out in the woods, but today, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's the video games or whatever, where everything is crash yeah, bang yeah. and they've got to see something be destroyed or... Oh, yeah. Or... Uh, caught on fire or beat up or whatever oh, I know. Uh, for entertainment. Uh, you know, I uh, I don't feel that way. No, oh, I mean, we, my sister and I, we lived at the end, dead end of Beach Sugar Ball Road there and we had, we had no kids. We had to make our own fun, you yeah. know, and that was it. Indeed, I had to sit inside with my grandparents and watch soap operas all afternoon. <laughs> but, <laughs> but to know me, that's what it was. You made you had to make your own fun. We couldn't go only as far as my grandmother could see us, and that was it. Yep. You know, but to today it's like I don't know what the problem is, but man. But you know, when when I think of when you're talking about then doing that devil tree, all I can think of is the movie of the Wizard of Oz when they went to the uh, somebody grabbed some apples off that tree and the tree started to grab them and I said that that's what you need is somebody like when they go doing that have that tree and grab them <laughs> that would stop them but uh, you know it, it's I don't know I don't understand it never will I guess my, my folks were too strict with us there and you know I mean it was bad enough to have like you say a weasel or a skunk or whatever attack our chicken coop you know at night and stuff and ah oh, but to have somebody just purposely cut tubing or whatever, it don't make sense. Not at all. No. Well, as I say, it takes, it takes all different kinds. things to entertain. Yes, it does. It takes all kinds on it, Dean. It does. What is it? You know? How they were brought up and so forth. Yeah, it's true. So, Well, I'm really glad you came on today. And I know you were, you were not feeling good the last couple of weeks. Is the ability to use tree cameras helpful to catch them? Have you thought about that? Um, I actually have... A, I think there's four uh, cameras out there right now, just simply because um, of the problems that we've had. So, well, that's good yeah. because that should. Uh, did you have a sign saying these are all monitored on camera? Or? Um, I do in a couple places. Yeah, yeah. 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 The no, uh, game but, cameras are what I use, and they work well. Yeah. And you're open, you're open all year long with your, for your maple products, or just during the spring and early summer? And just, you know. I have a sign on the sugar house that says, if we're here, we're open. Yeah, there and you go. Because, uh, you know, like right now, there's nobody there. No. So I'm, yeah. but, you yeah. know, when I get back there in an hour or so after gathering, yeah. you know, if people come, I'm open. Well, because, you know, the more and more people learn that now the maple season is in full bloom, that, uh, and goes as you say, Maple Weekend's coming up, and uh, well, that'll be a good good uh, promotion there. And uh, I just think you know it, it's a great thing, and you know whether it's apples, corn, maple syrup, you know farming is so important in agriculture. You know people just assume that go to McDonald's and buy a burger. Where did the other burger come from? It came from hell. Do fishing game help out with criminal enforcement? Um, fishing game, um, because of their budget restraints and the amount of funding, yeah. unfortunately, here in the state, um, no. Yeah. Um, we had some issues on Turtle Pond recently, um, and I simply asked them to enforce the RSA speed limit. Yeah. And they said that uh, they didn't have the staff to do that. Yeah. And the Concord Police, who was also charged with doing that, they said that they had more important issues. Oh, yes. How well I know that one. We've heard that. I've had so. major problems with a roommate recently, and they've just been so. as good as I hoped. You know, if, if <laughs> that's what our tax dollars are, 
are paying for. <clears throat> and supposedly. It's no wonder that, uh, you know, farming and some of the other uh, activities around uh, the city are not being funded. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's true. So. It's, uh, Is the ice out yet at Turtle Island? Not yet. Not it yet. isn't. Um, well, I thought it'd be out by now. They were actually out there fishing um, Sunday. Really? And I just I shook my head. Because oh, of, you know, my gosh. Uh, I, I just can't imagine people doing that. Um, the ice at Hotel Pond in Loudoun, where I live, is starting to recede on the edges, and I expect yeah, that, yeah. that will probably, well, maybe another week. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, it's it's I I, I, I I look in the paper they had shown them taking the bob houses off of uh, Winnipesaukee, and they were talking about how people leave a mess behind. They don't take their messes with them. You know, yeah. what is that problem? No wonder the ponds and lakes are all polluted. You know, I've often wondered, especially with Winnipesaukee, maybe Winnesquam too, but I've often wondered what in the heck is down at the bottom of that lake? The stuff you'd find down there. You know, There's between cars and boats and everything. You know, it'd be just, I don't know. Yeah. But they wonder why they're polluted and stuff, or why isn't there when the way it's going. But. You know, as you know, Hot Hole Pond is a, is a very popular fishing spot, and from my front porch or, or deck, I can look down and 35 feet onto the wa water, and so many times I'll see fishermen out there, not all, but, and unfortunately a few ruin it, but they throw, uh, uh, you know, their oh. empty soda bottles, beer cans, oh, whatever, yeah. in the water, they'll fill them up with water and, and sink them. There you go. You know, so, yeah, they're... they're all I have to do is dive down and I can see it. Wow. Well, if you're looking for some fresh maple syrup, take a ride out to Oak Hill Road, number uh, Maple Tree Farm out there, and uh, see Dean, and he'll gladly show you around and give you, give you some syrup. So, and uh, you know, all the little goodies to taste too you can uh, buy out there. So, with that in mind, have a great day, great weekend, and uh, we'll look forward to talking with you soon on Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Patton.